Uh, very good evening to all dear brothers uh, in Christ. Uh, we thank our uh, Heavenly Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving it another opportunity to discuss about his, uh, you see, uh, wonderful words of uh, life. So <clears throat> today we're going to see the subject about uh, three harvest. So when we say about harvest, uh, uh, we need to remember that there are three things in a harvest. One is the separation of the, you see, the waste and the fruit. And the other is the gathering of the fruits. And uh, the later part uh, is actually the burning of the, you see, uh, the waste. So these uh, uh, three things uh, actually will uh, happen uh, in a harvest. So dear brethren, uh, 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 when the harvest uh, uh, will uh, take place, you see, uh, did Jesus mention about any harvest in the Bible? If you see, yes, uh, Jesus, uh, Matthew 9, 37, he says, uh, the harvest uh, is truly plenty to his uh, disciples. So did he mean that uh, Jesus had a field uh, where uh, he had, uh, you see, cultivated a lot of, uh, you see, agriculture and uh, it had come for the fruitage and there was a, you see, uh, supposed to be a harvest, uh, if you see, no, dear brethren. So Jesus was not uh, literally speaking about a literal harvest of any field. So if you see in the Bible, there the Bible speaks about uh, three harvest. Okay. So when does the harvest uh, take place? If you see, in all the three ages, at the end of each age, you see, the harvest uh, actually takes place. So let us read Matthew 13, 39, brother. Gopal brother, can you read? Or home brother, can you read? Matthew 13, 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are, are the angels. angels. Good. Thank you, brother. So the harvest is the end of the world. So if you see, when does the harvest uh, take place as per the Bible, if you see, it says at the end of the world. End of the world means what? End of each and every age, there is a harvest. So if you see in the Bible, there is a Jewish harvest, you see, and the gospel age. Uh, there is a Jewish age, gospel age, and a millennial age or a thousand years. We have studied about uh, this one in the three world classes. So at the end of, end of each and every age, there is a harvest. So let us, uh, you see, uh, study about the three harvest. First, let us study about the Jewish harvest. The Jewish harvest is mentioned in Matthew 3, 12. Matthew 3rd chapter, verse 12, brother. Huh? Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. See, these uh, words are spoken by John the Baptist regarding the work of our Lord. He says... Jesus has a fan in his hand and he will thoroughly purge, you see, his floor and he will gather the wheat uh, to the gardener and he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. So, what is actually John the Baptist speaking? Does he mean that uh, literally Jesus is going to come and have uh, a fan in his hand where he is going to wave the fan and uh, gather all the wheat and just to wave it to the wind? No, we all know that uh, Jesus never had any literal uh, field and all. Hence, if you see, in Matthew 3rd chapter 7 to 9, Jesus, uh, John the Baptist was addressing these, uh, you see, matters uh, to the Jewish people, especially to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was telling them to bring forth the fruit of repentance. If you don't bring forth the fruit of repentance, what will happen now? God will cut you off from his favor. That's what John the Baptist was telling. And he said in 10th verse, you see, that even now God's judgment is already upon the nation of Israel. Read, brother. Matthew 3, 10, brother, please. Uh. And now also the axe is laid on the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruits is hewn down. And cast into the fire. Mm. See, now already the axe is laid to the where? Not to the trunk of the tree, but even to the roots. But the entire thing will be uprooted completely. Therefore, 
the bringing of the fruitage is important. Now, what is the meaning of tree? Where is uh, John the Baptist speaking about the little tree? What is the meaning of tree in the Bible, brother? Tell me, home brother, Gopal brother, Nation. Ashish brother. Huh? Nation. Correct. The righteous nation of Israel. Very good. In Psalms 1, first chapter, they say, no? Huh? You see? Huh? What does it say? Huh? Blessed is the man that walketh uh, not in the counsel of the ungodly, but who meditates uh, day and night in God's word. He is like a tree planted by the waters of river. Uh, you see? Huh? So that means huh? the nation of Israel were righteous people in God's sight. Uh, God had planted them by the side of the truth uh, and expected the fruits. Uh, but unfortunately, the people of Israel did not bring uh, you see, suitable fruits. Hence, God is saying that uh, you shall be cut off as a nation. And what will happen? Uh, you shall be thrown or crashed into unquenchable fire. What is this fire? What is this fire? Is it a literal fire or a hell fire? What is this fire? God's judgment. Very good, brother. So, fire here means the wrath of God. Exactly correct. And that's what John the Baptist says. You see, in uh, Matthew 3 7, brother. Matthew 3 7, read, brother, please. But when, but when he. he... But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had wanted you to flee from the wrath to come? Ah, very good. Who has told you to flee from the wrath? Ah, flee from the wrath. So that fire in the Bible, John the Baptist itself clearly tells that that is the wrath of God. You see, that is the Wrath. Wrath means what? This is not the literal fire. So God shows his anger, you see, and that anger is compared to, you see, a fire in the Bible. Okay. Now, after telling this work of Jesus, he also tells the main important thing what Jesus is going to come and do. Read Matthew 3.11, brother. Huh? Matthew 3.11, brother, please. Matthew 3.11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, mm. whose shoes I am mm. I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, Jesus will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, what is this baptism of Holy Ghost and fire? You see, huh? Holy Ghost and fire. Everybody thinks that uh, both the baptism of uh, you see, Holy Spirit and fire is one and the same. You see, dear brethren, uh, let us uh, think it out if it is the same or not. See, if we take uh, water baptism, what will happen? We need to be completely immersed in water. So what will happen to our body? Our body will completely be wet by water. Correct, no? Correct, no? Yes, sir. Hmm. Now, if we are supposed to be baptized in spirit, what does it mean? That means we should be filled with the spirit. Huh? Holy Spirit of God. Okay. Now, same, if we need to be baptized by fire, what does it mean? Huh? That means we should be completely immersed in fire. Now, what will happen if we are completely immersed in fire? What will happen to us? If you are completely, you see, Dissolved in fire. What will happen to us? We'll burn up. Ah, we will burn out. That's, that is what actually John the Baptist was saying. So Jesus is going to come and he is going to have a fan in his hand and he is going to thoroughly purg. You see, his floor means, you see, he is not speaking about literally any of these things. Then... So you see, when Jesus came, there were actually two classes of people that lived during the first advent of Christ. One class of people were like the wheat, the grain wheat, who had a lot of weight. But other class of people were only, you see, huh? like what? Chaff. 
they did not have any weighty grain inside. Now, who are these people? Uh? You see, the people who are only outwardly with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, uh, you see, and the people who, who did not have any godliness in them. But uh, they were also other people who were uh, very godly, seeking for Christ. Uh, these are the disciples of Jesus Christ. Therefore, when Jesus Christ came at the first advent, there were two types of people living in this earth. Read, brother. Romans 9 chapter, verses 6 to 7, brother. Please. Not as though the word of the God had taken none effect, but they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, ah, because they are... You see? What does it say? For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Now, what does it mean? It says, not all the people of Israel are Israel, it seems. How is it possible? Those who are born in Israel, if they are not Israel, then who are they? Can they be Americans? Can they be Indians? No. But yet the Bible says, just because you are born in Israel, you can't be a Israel. You can't be a Jew. Then who is a real Jew? Continue, brother. Oh. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall they, thy seed be called. Ah, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Just because you are born through Abraham, huh? just because you are in the lineage of Abraham, you are on the generation of Abraham, you don't become a Jew. So there is a character to become a Jew, it seems to be. What is that character? That character is that the faith of Abraham should be in those people. Then only you can be the children of Abraham. Therefore, when Jesus Christ came to this earth in the first advent, there were two types of people. One who had faith on Abraham, and not only that one, they had their works like Abraham, but other people were there who just had faith and did not have any works at all. So there were two types of people. One who were completely like Abraham, the other people were only outwardly like Abraham. Therefore, when Jesus saw Nathaniel, what did he say to Nathaniel? He said, Behold, a Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Read, brother. Huh? John 1 47, brother. Hmm. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Ah, in whom there is no guile. Israelite indeed. You see, Israelite, true Israelite, it seems. Huh? There is no guile. That means he is a pure grain. No outward characters. You see, no polished characters and all. He is really, from heart, he is a Jew. But apart from that one, we know that Pharisees and Sadducees, how are they? They were only, you see, outward Jews. Jesus told, no? Whitewashed, sepulchre. You are like a cup. You are washed only outside, inside and all. What is there? You see? Full uh, filthiness, uh, isn't it? Uh, huh? Therefore, these are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Read, brother. Matthew, Matthew 23. You see, Matthew 23, uh, 25 uh, and 27. You read, brother. Huh? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of exertion and excess. Ah, see? Ah, wait, wait, brother. What does it say? Like uh, scribes and Pharisees. How are you? Hypocrites. Uh, you may clean the outside the cup, uh, but inside what is there? Uh, full filthiness. Uh. So these people were trying to be good only outside, but inside and all where they were completely covered with uh, all sorts of filthiness, dear brethren. Hmm? Hmm? How did they pray? Jesus said, no. Huh? Whenever you wanted to pray, how you will pray, you stand on the roadside so everybody can see, you make long prayers. You try to pretend to visit uh, the houses of the widows and uh, try to help them. But uh, instead of that one, you loot them. You, you cross seven seas and bring one to your religion. You convert one. And after converting them, what you will do? You will make him double fold of hell. Jesus said, no. And not only that one, they did not allow the people to understand the law itself. 
they took out the understanding of the law read luke 1152 brother luke 1152 brother hmm. Kapal brother, can you read? Hmm. <coughs> you are there, brother? Luke eleven fifty two. Gopal brother. Woe unto you, yeah. lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in you hindered. Hmm. So what did Jesus say? Who want to you lawyers? What have you done? You have taken the key of knowledge. Key of knowledge means the key of understanding. The proper understanding of scriptures were taken from the people. They were feeding so much of false doctrine that the real doctor never entered in their heart. You see, therefore, what do you say? Huh? That means you don't enter the kingdom of God. Neither allow other people to enter into the kingdom of God. Huh? And what does our, uh, Jesus say? What did Jesus call them? Read Matthew 23, 27, brother. You are there, Gopal, brother? Yes, brother. Uh, please read, brother. Woe ye unto scribes and uh, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto uh, witted sculptures, which indeed appear beautiful onward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Ah, you like the sepulchre. Graveyard. How is the graveyard? Beautifully decorated outside. But if you open it, full of uh, filthiness. The same thing with, with the Pharisees. That is why they called as chaff. Only outward. You see, inside, what is there? Inside, no true godliness is there. So, these two people were there. Two types of people were there when Jesus came to the first adventure. Now Jesus separated them. How did Jesus separate them? Using a fan. Now what is the thing that Jesus used? Is it a literal fan? No, it is the word of God. The words which Jesus spoke, that separated these two types of people. Correct now? Correct now, brother? The Pharisees, Pharisees, they were all gathered at one side and all the disciples were gathered at one side. Correct now? Huh? Correct now? Are you all listening? Yes, brother. Ah, you see? See what happened? When Jesus spoke first time in the temple, what happened? What was the reaction of the people? Luke 4, 22. Read, brother. Luke 4, 22. Hmm. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? See? They all wonder, they appreciated his teaching. Huh? One category of people. But see the other category of people, what did they do? Huh? Verse 28 and 30, brother. Huh? Wait, read, and all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust uh, him out of the city and see? led him on to you see, what did they do? They heard in the synagogue, filled with wrath. They pushed him out of the city. They wanted to kill him. That time itself, first time Jesus is speaking God's word. You see, in the temple, see, the reaction of the people. The chaff rejected Christ. But the wheat accepted Christ. You see, many wanted to believe Jesus at that time. You know what happened? Many believers did not, many people did not openly confess it. Why? You know, because they fear that they will be cast out out of the temple. Nobody will, you see, help them. No support will be there for them. You see, read uh, John 7, 46 to 48, brother. Huh? And John 12, 42 to 43. Hmm. The officers answered, never man spake like this. Then answered them, the Pharisees, are ye also deceived? Hmm. Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? Uh, have any of them believed? You see, what happened? Uh, huh? Are you deceived? Uh, did any of the rulers believe? Did any of the great uh, preachers believe? That's what they said to Jesus. Uh, the people who went to uh, arrest Jesus, uh, you see. So one people did not accept Christ. One people said, uh, no man speak like this. Uh, this is the two classes of people. You see, they were in Jesus' days and Jesus 
doctrine separated them. Luke 12, sorry, John 12, chapter 42 to 43. Huh. Ashish, brother, can you read? John 12, 42 to 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. See, they loved to follow Jesus, but the openly did not confess. Why? If they confess, they will be thrown out of their synagogues. Then what will they do? What will happen to their family? They won't get graveyard. Nobody will come for the marriage. Because they loved the praises of men instead of praises of God. They did not fear God. Therefore, these are the chaff class. Now, Jesus separated. Now, what did they do? For the wheat class, Jesus anointed them with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. We all know, you see, huh? the real wheat class people, the God the chosen people, they were anointed with God's Holy Spirit. But what about to the Pharisees and Sadducees, uh, where they anointed with Holy Spirit? Uh? They were anointed with fire. Now you tell me, what is the meaning of fire? What is the meaning of fire? Chosen. Wrath of God. Yes, wrath of God. Destruction. The Pharisees and Sadducees Upon them came the wrath of God. And Israel was totally destroyed in 70 AD. Read 1 Thessalonians 2nd chapter. 1 Thessalonians 2nd chapter, 16th verse. Brother. 1 Thessalonians 2nd chapter, 16th verse. Brother. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fulfill of their sins all the way. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. See, the wrath has come upon them to the utmost. You see, the brethren, God's wrath was poured on Israel. So this is the first harvest. Got it, brother? So Jewish harvest, the wheat and chaff were separated. How were they separated? Not literally, but it's a literal, it's a separation of the people based upon the truth. Okay, now let us come to the second harvest, that is in the gospel age. Jesus tells this one. In Matthew 13 chapter, verse 24 to 30. We know this one very well. So no need to read all the verses. Let us concentrate on main points. The parable of the wheat and tares. You see? And Jesus explains the meaning of the parable of wheat and tares in the same chapter, verses 37 to 43. Now let us go through the inner, you see, meaning of this one. You see, Jesus said about a, you see, field where a man went and sowed a good seed, you see, and uh, what happened? It seems uh, that was a good seed, uh, was a wheat. Uh, he sowed, uh, you see, to all the places it seems. Uh, and uh, uh, what does Jesus say? What is the meaning of this one? Uh, let us read, you see, Matthew 13, chapter, verse 37. Read, brother, please. Matthew 13, 37, brother, please. Hmm. He answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Hmm. Continue. The field is the world. Ah, the, good... the field is the world. So, the Jesus Christ and the apostles, initially Jesus did the sowing. Then, after his death, what happened? You see, the disciples, apostles, you see, did the sowing. And the seed is the word of God, God's word. You see, the faith of Christianity was sowed in all the world. You see, the field is the world. So what happened? Once uh, when all the servants slept, what happened? Uh, the enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. Now, what is the meaning of this one? Let us continue to read there only, brother. Read, brother. Continue, brother, please. Hmm. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Hmm. Uh, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Ah, see, he says the enemy came in sword. They have then now where did the enemy sow? Huh? Enemy did not sow anywhere else. He sowed among the wheat things. So here in this explanation, Jesus tells the wheat are the children of God. And the tears are the children of the devil. So, where did the devil sow his children? He did not sow his children 
in uh, any Muslims or Hindu temples. You see? But where did he saw? He sowed. In the same place where Jesus and the apostles and all his disciples sowed the wheat. That's what he says. When the, you see, workers slept in the same place, that is among Christianity itself, the tares were sown, it seems. Now, what is the meaning of this tares? This is a false wheat. This is not a true wheat. You see, dear brethren, both look alike, but there's a lot of difference. One is a true wheat, which is very healthy, and other is a very poisonous food. You see? So, what does this one mean? Means among Christianity itself, when Jesus and all the apostles died, Satan began to sow false Christians among Christianity during the period of Constantine. We should this one detail in the period of Antichrist, class of Antichrist. You see, the subject about what? Hell, soul, Trinity, Good Friday, Bishop, Father, Reverend, Mass, Easter, you see, huh? confession, child baptism, tongues, miracles, all these are false doctrines. Who sowed this one? Satan, the devil, where did he sow? He did not sow it among any other, you see, denomination or any other, you see, religion. He sowed it among the Christians in the same field. Therefore, if you see, today, the world, what has happened? Huh? It was actually a wheat field, but today, if you see, what has happened? It is only corrupt. All the churches in the whole world, let it be any church, it is totally corrupted with only tears. There is no truth in that one at all. Why? Because only false doctrine is there. You see? Huh? They marry, then drivers. Smoking, drinking. You see? They tell them when giving marriage invitation, oh, don't miss some wine party. Where does the Bible say that you should drink wine? Huh? Lot of difference is there in the wine which is mentioned in the Bible and today what is sold in the wine stores, sir. You see, you do all sorts of sin and go and confess to the Father, it seems, sir. Huh? Your sins are forgiven. Huh? Dear brethren, you see, this is all against the teachings of the Bible. So these are the false Christians. So even today, you see, among this uh, tear field, which was actually originally a wheat field, there are Bible studies. Uh, they also teach the Bible. They also hold the same Bible. It is the same field. You see, they also have the Bible study, but it is done very cleverly that nobody gets any question. Nobody thinks out of the box. You see, nobody gets any questions. They should they take it so cleverly, so carefully. Why? Because if they ask any questions, these people don't know. No. In theology colleges, they, they are not thought about all these questions and all answering the questions. They will know only, only to speak only in the uh, box. Uh, what box? Uh, uh, collection uh, tights. Uh, uh, offerings, uh, you see, forgiveness of sin, judgment, uh, love, only this one only. Where is the truth? Uh, where is the doctrine? There is no doctrine at all. Therefore, you see, they are all blinded. They are all sitting there as dumb dogs. So, this is the difference. You see the photo. The left side is the terror. The right side is the golden wheat. You know, what is the difference? When the wind blows on the wheat field. If it is really genuine wheat, it will go to the wind. It will surrender. But this tear now, it won't surrender. It will stand direct only. What is the meaning of it? When we blow the wind of doctrine, when we speak the truth, when we hear the truth, what should we do? We should surrender to God's word. If we don't surrender to God's word, if we don't submit to God's word, it is a clear sign that we are not a real Christians. We are all duplicate Christians. Correct? Huh? Isn't it correct, brother? We should all obey God's word or not? Huh? Yes, we should. We should. Huh? After uh, studying all these uh, important truths, should we uh, accept the truth or not? Huh? We should. Hmm, we should accept, accept uh, that is the sign of a real Christian. After learning all this truth, if you still want to follow the false doctrines in the false churches, that is a clear sign that we are not the wheat class. We are of the tear class. Read Isaiah 66 to Isaiah 66 to. 
For all those things hath mine hath made, and all those things have been, said the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Ah, see, very wonderful, beautiful market in the Bible. For all those things that mine hand made, the heavens, the earth, everything is created by me. But uh, whom will I look into? I have so much of creation, but I don't take interest in those things. But I will look into the man. Who is it? A poor and the contrite spirit. You see, when he has a lot of sorrow in his heart, many people, Christians, they pray, Oh Lord, oh you Lord, full tears. But, uh, eh? is that sufficient? No, continue the verse, he says, and he that tremble at my word. Trembling at my word means what? As soon as the Bible says like this one, immediately you should surrender. That is the real character of a Christian. That is the person whom God is looking the other end. These are the lakh and 44,000. These are the weak class of people God is seeking today. Dear brethren, this is the real grain. Jesus is doing the separation of these two people now. What did Jesus say in the parable? Don't disturb anything. Why? If it was disturbed in the dark ages itself, what would have happened? The parable says even the wheat will come out. The true Christians also would have been destroyed during the dark ages if it was disturbed. So God allowed it to grow till the harvest period. That is the end of the world. Now what period we are living? We are living in the beginning of the gospel age or we are living in the end of the gospel age, brother? Where are we living? We are the living in the beginning of the age or the end of the age? End. End of the age. Very good. So this is the period of harvest. Dear brethren, this is not the period of sowing. Many Christian pastors, they don't even know the truth. Instead of going and doing the harvest work, they are going and sowing the truth in where? Going and sowing the truth where? In the whole world, dear brethren. The whole world. They go to villages, sir. Very remote places and, and they think that they want to tell the truth. To whom? Whom they are telling? They are telling to other religions, Hindus and Muslims. Dear brethren, now will they listen? No, why? This is not the time of sowing. This is the time of reaping. What did Jesus say? Huh? Cast not the truth to whom? Cast not the truth to the dogs. He said no. Read uh, Matthew 7, 6. Read, brother. Matthew 7, 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your uh, ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Uh, going and sowing it before dogs, uh, swines. Uh. They are the people who don't listen and accept the truth, dear brethren. Why simply waste our time? We should be very smart. Uh. What Jesus did, the same thing we should do. What did Jesus say? How should we be? Matthew 10, 16, brother. Huh? Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as dogs. Uh, we should be wise as serpents. To whom we should tell the truth? To them only we should tell. Those who have the ears to hear, only to them we should tell the truth. Those who want to accept the truth, only to them we should tell the truth, not everybody. You see, some people who don't have the ear of uh, huh? listening, why should we simply waste our time? What did Jesus say? If somebody doesn't receive the truth, just shake your feet and come. Huh? Now what will happen? The pastors, they curse. Oh, if you don't listen, what will happen? You will go to hell. Hell fire will burn forever. It seems. Huh? Where does the Bible say? Very pure, false doctrine, dear brethren. When somebody dies, what does it tell? It tells the soul went away to heaven. Where does the Bible say? The Bible says that the soul went to heaven. Dear brethren, only the rule truly consecrated, only those people, you see, they go to heavenly salvation. Rest of the, all the people are dying and lying in the graves. They will all come back at the second advent. So, as Jesus' first advent in the Jewish way, there was a false prophet and a true, so false Jewish people and a true Jewish people. Similarly, in the end of Christian age, you see what is there? There are true Christians and false Christians. Now, who was against 
for Christ in first advent? Who were against Christ at the first advent? Huh? Who was against Christ's teachings? Was it the local people or the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Pharisees and Pharisees. Ah, these are the religious leaders who were against Christ. Correct, brother. So today, who is against Christ? Not the... No, you see, local Christians. But who is against Christ? It is the leaders, the pastors, the fathers, the reverends, the bishops, the cardinals. These are the people who are against the true truth. Why? As uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they ask, no, Jesus, huh? who are you? Who is this fellow? Huh? Where did you get the certificate? Similarly, the people ask, oh, with uh, theological did you study? No theological edge, no need of any theological edge. No need of any certificate. Did Jesus study in any school? No. Ah, did he get any certificate? No. No. Then who taught him? God's Holy Spirit. That is important, dear brethren. God's Holy Spirit is there. You say, we will be the wheat grain. Huh? And during the first advent, what did the Pharisees and Sadducees do? They took away the key of knowledge. They did not allow the people to understand the Bible. They did not allow to listen to the teachings of Jesus. You see, they divert the mind. Similarly, now also, who is the people who is against the truth of these truths? The pastors. You see, they hate it. Because why? They will lose the revenue. Correct? No? They will lose their offerings. They will lose the people. Dear brethren, they are all behind money. As it was there in the first advent, they were only outwardly, dear brethren, only whitewashed sepulchre, nicely wearing suit, boot, coat, everything. But instead, what is there? Nothing is there. So, Jesus is doing the harvest now, they're doing the separation as he did at the first advent. Now, also, the separation is taking place. Okay? And the first advent, Jesus himself separated, having a fan. But now, what is there with Jesus' hand? Is uh, having a sharp sickle. Read, brother. Revelation 14, chapter, brother. Revelation 14, 15, brother. Huh? Revelation 14, 15. Mm. And another angel came out of the temple, uh, cr crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, first in thy sickle and reap. For the time is come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is reap. Ah, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So Jesus, now at the second advent, what is he doing? He is using the sickle and doing the harvest. Now, what is that sharp sickle? It is the word of God. Jesus said in Matthew 10, chapter 34 to 39, I never came to bring peace on earth. I came to bring a sword. It will separate the father and the mother. It will separate the son, you see, and the daughters. The daughter-in-law to the mother-in-law, they'll be against. Why? Because this sharp truth, one person will accept. One person will not accept. You see, you were all listening. No? So many sisters were coming in. You see, they were all from a Christian society. No? They were all working for Christian organization. What happened? The sharp truth of a Lord's Supper came immediately without even listening to the class they vacated. Correct? No? Huh? Correct? No? Brother, go for brother. Home brother. Correct? No? Yes, brother, correct. Why? They don't want to accept the doctrines which is not there in the organization. Their organization's teachings are different than what the Bible says. Now, is it easy to understand, to accept it? No, that will cause division. Okay? So, similarly, today, what will happen? Now? Divisions will come. We don't know from next week who will listen to the classes. Correct, no? Divisions may come between you also. Isn't it? The sharp truth will come upon you also. Huh? Now it is a matter of question. Will you accept the truth or reject it? Correct now, brother? Gopal brother? Phone brother? Correct now? Whether you will accept the truth or not? Accept. I'll accept. Uh, yes, that is the question. If we accept the truth, and that means we are of the peak class. There will be a lot of, uh, you see, huh? Problems. So many people against will come. But uh, no need to fear. Jesus is with us. Dear brethren. Therefore, what did Jesus say? Huh? Gather all the wheat into the barn. 
then bundle the shares. Bundle means what? The? Bundle in their own denomination, one faith. And what will happen? They will all be burnt in the see, coming great time of trouble. Very shortly, there is going to be a great time of trouble in this world. And the world will end. In this uh, end and destruction of the world, this fear class will be totally, you see, destroyed. Dear brethren, what did Jesus say? Who are the people who make harvest? He said, angels. This is not the little angels, dear brethren. These are the God's children who are living on the earth, who are called God's angels in the Bible. Human beings are called as God's angels in the Bible. Read Malachi 2.7, brother. Malachi 2.7. Malachi 2.7. For the priest lips should keep knowledge and they should they should seek the law of, at his mouth for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Very good, brother. See, the priest in his mouth should be God's word, it seems. Because he is the messenger of God. That means he is the angel of the Lord. So, the people who speak God's word, they are called as angels of God. It is through these angels that God does the Harvest work. Dear brethren, so this is how it is going to happen at the end of, uh, you see, the gospel age. As it happened in the end of a Jewish age, same parallelly, it is going to happen at the end of, uh, you see, the Jewish age. Now, who were against Christ uh, during first advent? Not any other religions, uh, not Romans. The Romans were never against Christ. It is his own people. It is his own people. Similarly, today it is his own Christians. No, many people did not believe Jesus. Why? Because they feared they will be thrown out of the synagogue, temple. And nobody will uh, favor them. Similarly, today so many people after listening to the truth, they fear. Why? Because they will be thrown out of the churches. Dear brethren, being a member of the church is not important. Being a member of heavenly church is important. Uh, here, what will happen? If you die, they will come and put some flowers on the grave and go. But uh, if we are faithful, God upon our death will shower flowers uh, and welcome to our heavenly salvation, dear brethren. So, let us be cautious, okay? And let us see about the third harvest in the coming weeks, okay? Because this is a little bit lengthier. So, we will break here. The next coming Saturday, we will have the part two of the harvest. That is the third harvest. Okay, brother? Any doubts, any questions, you can ask her.